What is the crack lads? We are back episode 14 of Dream Team Chronicles and today we're going to just have a quick enough video, I think a short enough one. Um, I know you guys have been asking me for more episodes more regularly so I think what we're going to do is just have more episodes because you know I do play the game um, only when I'm recording and obviously keep you on every part of the journey, you know who we sign, when we win, lose, draw, uh, up the divisions, you know what packs we open, whatever. So the new packs today our strong defenders, which you can see here. Um, Pika has got a, a special goal celebration. Fairly decent on my play him up front. But so what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to open a couple of the packs here, the strong defenders. We're going to get our three defenders for that. Then we're going to go in and have a look at our team. So I did an episode or I did a video on setting your team up right, like with anchoring on and sub tactics and all that. I'm going to show you what I'm rocking with at the moment and explain a little bit more about it. All right, so we've got our we've got our strong defenders have a quick look through them here. Um, so we've got Delict, Varane, Carlos, Pique, Lacroix, Saliba, Hugo, Cotes, Martinez, Shalini, Upamecano, and Koulibaly, right? All right, so I had a quick change because it's, it's actually roasting here the last couple of days. So we're going to open and we're going to go straight in and sign. I mean, I would like Upamecano. He would probably be my ultimate or Koulibaly would be my ultimate. So we will see who we get. Any of them. Once I get one decent player out of it, I don't really care. <sighs> League one, that could be Lacroix or Saliba. Probably one of those guys, which we would take. Yeah, I'm happy with that, man. I'm happy with that. He is an absolute unit. He's a beast in the game. And I think he can play left back as well or right back. I'm not 100% sure now, but I think he can play one of the other positions. Yeah, he's going to be a big, big, big upgrade. Well, look, he's not going to be an upgrade in terms of starting 11, but in terms of squad depth, I can train him up a little bit. He's B-form as well this week. Blocker, area superiority. He's got nice acceleration. He only goes five levels, so um, it's not like we're going to be boosting him up massively. We'll have a look at that in a second on eFootballDB.com as we open up the next one. What do you guys think about these featured agents? Do you like that you can get a guaranteed good player? Oh, four star. This could be Carlos, I'd say. Oh, it's Peekers. It's Peekers, Peekers, Peekers. PK is always an absolute animal in the game, lads, even though he isn't um, he isn't the fastest or the best. But I think he's going to be way too similar for Van Dyke. that I probably won't be replacing Van Dyke because he doesn't have the levels to go up. I think Upper Meccano would be kind of a guy that might replace Van Dijk, but we'll have a look at PK's stats, lads. He's not he's not the worst. I mean, he's got some fairly decent stats. He can play 66 as well. He's on wavering form, but he's C rating. So, yeah, we go on, we go on. That's two good pulls, lads. I'll be happy enough with that. But as I was saying, are you guys like kind of happy that you can get a guaranteed, you know, really good player here that would make a difference to your squad? Or would you like more players with less of a chance of getting it? Or I don't know how way, what way you want to do it. Oh, cool, Bally. Kula Bali, please. This would be huge. It's not, though. It's Shalini. Oh, it's Delict. Ooh, so the top-rated player in the agents. Not bad, lads. Not bad at all. That is a good good pull, actually. I'm not getting too excited because, like, I have Maldini. I have Piaul. How do you pronounce Piaul, lads? Will you just tell me in the chat? Just spell it out for me. Right? Spell it out for me. Because I keep calling him Piaul or Piaul and uh, people are laughing at me. So tell me how to pronounce his name. And I've also got Van Dyke, obviously. All right, let's, we're over on eFootballDB.com. We're going to just take a quick look at PK stats, right? So as you can see here, just have to change the player level. It was set to five, but that'll be fixed in a, in a quick update. But he only gets six progression points. So by the time I give him out wide, maybe three points, like they're going to be gone. So I literally have three to four points to mess around with. So like, you know, what, what what's the point like? There's no point in even upgrading him, in my opinion. Like there's no point. He's not going to change the dial for me. Um, similarly with Delict, I think Delict only has four as well, so he's going to get six points. His out wide is 66, so I probably only need to do maybe one or two. I'll probably keep him for my quick counter team here, as you can see if I do decide to get a manager with quick, quick counter. Um, but like, yeah, I think that's the thing with these featured players. I mean, if I put up his dexterity to 72 here, 71 here, like, it's not going to make a massive difference to his stats. And then the last guy, Saliba, he does have the five. His pace is pretty decent. I could probably leave that as is and put it up. And his out wide is 53, so I'd need the rest of the points for that. 
So I think that's the problem with the featured players at the moment, that you'd nearly be better off get their base level card and train them up maxed out. Um, I've got a lot of players that I can train here I'm just looking at, but um, yeah, it's it's very it's very interesting because I do think that they probably need to have a look at that, in my opinion. But we're going to go straight in, lads, and we're going to actually have a look at our squad, right? So this is kind of a bit of a, a live set up the squad. You know, I did a video on this. It was about 15, 16 minutes long, so do check that out. So a lot of people were asking me, right, about certain kind of ways that I'd set up my squad. Um, so just to kind of go through it in a little bit more detail, right? With this squad that I have here, right, this is the default formation. So I'm going to do it again, right? I'm going to do it again. And this is my sub tactic, right? So the sub tactic, sub tactic is off at the moment, right? So with my main squad, the main team that I'm going to set up here, I'm going to have, right, my center backs all the way back here, okay? My two center backs in deep there. And then I'm going to pull Maldini back in until he becomes a CB. So he starts his left back, pull him in, keep dragging him in, keep dragging him in, keep dragging him in, keep dragging him in, a CB. And then you're going to leave your right back as your right back, right? So you pretty much effectively have a back tree here where a lot of the work that you're going to be doing defensively is going to come from this. Now, this is a 4-5-1 formation. It's going to be slightly different if you play a 4-3-3, four, uh, four, three, three, which is a lot of the, a lot of what people are, are playing. And up here then, I'm going to play a Barcelona-style midfield. So I'm going to have Patrick Vieira as a deep-line DMF. I know he's a workhorse and all that, but I think he's just the best stopper in the game. And then I'm going to have Munayin, and I can switch this here, um, which whatever way I want to put it. I can switch this here, um, you know, whatever players are up or whatever. I can throw in whoever I want to throw in as my substitutes. I can throw in Ansu Fati, I can throw in Neymar, I can throw in Timber, I can throw in Maradona, whoever. I've got a bench full of, of guys that are up. So Timber can come in here for Corona very easily. Um, and like all I'm going to be doing to focus on, on, this, on this game, right, is getting up and down the pitch with Diaz, right? Getting up and down the pitch, like he's going to cover left, like this channel here, the link between Diaz and Maldini, okay? Monain is going to be more attacking because I have the, I have the, like, I have the solid support of Timber right back or else Corona right back or if I buy a new right back. Paddy V is going to mop up the whole, the whole D there. So he's going to be anchoring, which I'll show you in a second. And then Ronaldinho, my main attacking threat is going to come from Ronaldinho, Pedri and Monain right, or whichever run, whichever wing I decide to manually choose to run through, do you know what I mean, so if I want to choose Diaz to be my main runner, I can very easily do that, and I can just play him manually, like by bringing him forward, by holding L1 when I'm passing the ball, to, to make him run on, but I effectively want Patrick Vieira, Maldini, Piaul, and Van Dijk to kind of, to kind of be chilling, like in my back, so that whenever I get caught in a counter attack, or my attack breaks down, they have to get past Patrick Vieira, and then they have to get past either Maldini, who's on the flanks, if you're attacking the flanks. If I'm going to get caught, and I'm playing against a really good guy that is destroying Timber on the left, or I'm just not defensive enough on the left, I can very easily change this and tuck him in here, put Maldini left, and I can put Timber uh, CB, right? I can move it around. Or if I'm getting a bit more freedom, I can do that and keep him a little bit more like attack-based, and then put Diaz up here. Do you know what I mean? So you kind of have a bit of variety. But for this, I usually start the game like that. And then Diaz as a position here. So from the tactics then, when I actually go into the team, the individual instructions, right? I've explained this in the last video. I have put on my defensive instructions on Vieira. I've also put anchoring on Vieira so that he doesn't move position. So he just stays in his position. And then I've also put on a counter target on Romario, right? So this this is going to be Romario here. Romario is not going to come back and track back. Like he's not going to come back and chase balls when he's not being controlled by me. If I manually want to do that, I can target him and manually bring him back. That's fine. But it, by uh, default, the AI isn't going to do that for him. So when I lose possession, I'm going to be trying to get the ball back with Pedri, Vieira, uh, Diaz, Maldini, Piaul, Van Dijk, and Timber. They're going to be my defensive unit. And I'm going to keep Munain, Ronaldinho, and Romario as kind of an advanced, you know, counter-attacking options, right? Then the deep line is obviously going to go on Vieira as well. So he'll stay back. This cannot be exciting to me if you're when playing with five at the back. So you can't do that when you're playing three CBs and two left and right uh, backs, right? 
So that's my instructions there. Then for my sub tactic, right? I covered this as well in the last episode, but I'm going over it again. So if you've, if you've seen all this, Les, you can skip ahead if you watch my last video. Um, but it might help you out if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. So for this, right, this is my default formation that I'm going to kick off with. So I'm going to start with this formation and then how my team play when they have the ball, when they don't have the ball, like the fluid formations of old, right? How they're going to play is going to be like this. So when I'm attacking, right, when I have the ball, when I have possession of the ball, my players, it says it here, right? My players will focus on attacking from the sides and crossing in the ball. So a typical wing team, a winger-based team, because I'm playing out wide. So Munayin, Diaz, as my wingers, are going to be bombing up the, up the wings, right? Any running line that they do is going to be hugging the touchline, right? So my main area of attack is, by default, going to be player positioned as wingers, like out hugging the touchline. But I'm also going to be able to play triangles and one touch and go between Ronaldinho and Pedri or Nakata or whoever I have in midfield. I can bring Romario in as a counterman that when I'm on a counter, I can throw the ball up to him. When I press the right, right stick to switch over, the player movement number two switches to what happens when we're defending. So this is explaining to you what happens when we go from attacking with the ball and having possession to losing the ball and not having possession and trying to win the ball back defending. So the defensive block will be focused in the midfield. So you can see there that this formation that's here in the little diagram is a flat 4-4-2. I'm playing a 4-5-1 effectively, right? So Ronaldinho is going to be an extra man back. So you can see in that little highlighted portion of the video or the diagram there of the, the, the pitch overview, you've got your four, four midfielders and we've got our four defenders, right? I'm also going to have Ronaldinho in that position as well so i'm going to be defending in that block now you can still get caught in the counter-attack over the ball over the top true balls and all that but i think that that's why out wide is so effective and you can see this for whatever formation or whatever team play style you're picking you can see that by just going into them and then pressing the right you know some of them have three some of them are they all have four i think so when we after gaining possession here right so this means that when I get a quick break, so I intercept it with Vieira and I spray it forward to Ronaldinho, how, how is the AI and my team reacting with a wide team play style? So it says it. When ball of possession is regained, players will tend to open wide to the side. So you've seen in videos that I've done previously where when I'm looking for an option when I get the ball to go counter-attacking, Monayin and Diaz are looking for it out wide. That's when I spray it to them, and then you can do what you want. Dribble, pass back into the center, touch and go on overlap, or cross. Even those who are positioned in the center of the pitch will slide a bit to the sides to provide support. So Ronaldinho and Pedri are going to kind of slide like Moses splitting the sea. They're going to like open up and go out. So Ronaldinho is going to go a little bit right. That's why I have positioned Ronaldinho a little bit more right rather than sitting right in front of Romario and Pedri out to the left as well. And then last but not least, we have after losing position. So this is how my team is going to react when I lose, lose possession, right? When the ball possession is lost, players will focus on forming a defensive block in the midfield, then adapt their formation according to the game state. So these two work together, and these two work together. One and three work together, and two and four work together. So go in and check to see what team play style you guys are playing, what it actually does, and you might find, oh, actually quick counter suits me a little bit better. Players will spring a counter-attack by actively dashing towards the opponent's goal. So basically, when you're playing quick counter, the minute you get the ball with Patrick Vieira or Van Dijk or Timber, all your players are just going to run forward in straight lines wherever they're standing on the pitch. They're not going to focus on going out wide. Some of them will go out wide if you've been positioned out wide. But if you're playing a 4-3-3, your wingers are going to hug the touchline and go straight up. Your center forward is going to go straight up. Your CMF, your AMF is going to go straight forward. Um, similarly with long ball, you know, you can see there that this is going to be direct focus on passing it through to, you know, a Lewandowski type player that you can hold up possession, right? So that's not going to suit Romario because he's not tall enough. He's not strong enough in the air, but go in and check your team play style level. You can improve a lot by just checking to see how your team works. And you might find, you know what, a wide doesn't suit me. I think I'll be better playing possession game. You can see here, everything is all about sharp passes in it, sharp passes in space, generally avoid dashing into spaces. So this is kind of the most, um, defensive minded one when you do have the ball like after gaining possession you can see that they're like they try to retain possession so they're not going to be providing massive distances between the next passes it's all going to be tight little ticky tacka passing right so that's kind of that and then what you can do in the sub tactic right is as i've already explained you can you can do this yourself so that you can alternate it right so say i'm down a goal and i want to push forward a little bit right I can be a bit more uh, offensive. So this is what I usually like to do. 
I like to switch to a 4-3-3. Ronaldinho right in the hole here with Pedri. And I kind of bypass the midfield a little bit. I'll keep I'll keep Maldini here, but I'll give Timber license to roam up and down. So obviously if I improve my right back, he'll be able to do it. So what I can actually do is I can start the game like that, like this. And then if things aren't going my way, I can switch to my secondary uh, one in, in game, right? So that's, that's kind of explaining it in the best possible way that I can explain it. So we're going to go in and I'm just going to try and show you a match in real time to see if anything that I'm talking about makes sense. Because hopefully I'll be able to show you a game. Um, we're actually going to play, we could actually even play the AI, I think, in this one. Let me see. Yeah, we will. We'll play the events if I'm able to use my dream team. So we'll see a kickoff and I'll just show you a couple of things. And I know this might be a boring episode for people. Um, I advise you do that starter cup as well, lads, because there's serious GP to be earned in it. But uh, yeah, this might be a bit, this might be a bit like boring for people, um, obviously. But yeah, a lot of people have been asking me. There's a lot of new people watching the video. So if you just want to see gameplay, um, I'm going to be into a match here now. It's not divisions, obviously. We will try and play a division or two, depending on how these matches go. Um, but we just need a draw here, so we're going to go into a match straight away and hopefully be able to to show you some of the some of the stuff because I know a lot of a lot of guys are downloading the game and playing it and wondering what way to set up their team. And there's a lot of information out there that every 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 one of us like content creator guys or that have played Pez or eFootball, we all have different opinions. Like some people will say quick counter is the best, some people will say out wide's the best, some people say that you don't need to use anchoring on your DMF if you're using a box to box player like Graven Birch or somebody like that um some people will say that you need to have two players up front or it's all you know it's all relevant to how you play and how your what your strengths lie in you know what i mean so that's the way i would say it is that you need to work out what works for you best to get a manager and set your team up right but yeah we'll try and show you with a couple of in-game clips here at the moment so i think what i'm going to try and do in this game is obviously i'm going to try and win but I'm not like I'll try and show you guys a couple of a couple of things um, that work for me, and hopefully the players will make the runs and it'll be it'll be a good game that I'm able to show you some stuff. Um, so, yeah. Oh man, this feels really heavy so far. One It's one. Oh, what a finish from Nakata! Beautiful goal. Sorry, Les, I got a bit distracted there. I never usually score from, from kickoff. That was a nice movement from Neymar. Oh, all we need is a point in this one, so... This guy's going to probably try and play a bit of ball now. Mario's getting back. So, you see by the way when I was telling you there the other day that... Or de telling you before the game that... Like, it's up to me whether I press back with Romario or not. Like, Romario, you can see him high up the pitch there. He's up in his position. He's up there. So, so like, he's not going to come back and track back unless I manually decide to do that. The same, with, uh, the same with Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho will a little bit, but he won't be as much as Romar Ronaldinho. So I always have an option up front. Oh, that's beautiful, Romario. <laughs> That's beautiful. I've been watching Spoonie Pizza's video tutorials. Oh, that would have been a lovely goal, lads. I fluffed my lines, though. I fluffed my lines. So here now again, right? So you'll see that when I get the ball back, my players are going to be on the attack through the width, through the wide positions. So you'll see here that when I get the ball here, give it back, and now you'll see Munayin. Like, you see Maldini there go out wide, even though he's playing CB. You'll see Neymar. Like that. Oh, come on. I like. Let's get rid of it. And see, I'm out wide then again. Oh, that's a bad pass, though. Oh, brilliant money. A lot of money. See the overlap, lads? I'm not making those runs. That's just my team. Corona! Oh! 
it's hard to concentrate, lads, without pausing the gameplay. But if you just notice, right, every time I have the ball with Munayin, you'll just notice that Corona, the run forward that Corona is going to make, is going to be out wide. Like, he's literally hugging the touchline. Save. Now, same thing here. Out wide. And that's why I think out wide suits me best, lads. Because I like the options of out wide. Neymar! Oh. Lads, can I score? Yes, finally. And again, you can see Neymar, look. Out, touching. Romario! That's a beautiful goal. Out wide again. Overlap. Inside. Oh, man. Oh, my God, Romario! What is that? Back now, Paddy V. Watch Paddy V, lads. That's the anchoring. That's the anchoring there. It's brilliant. Definitely recommend doing it. Lovely. Oh, Neymar! Oh, what a save. Oh, Mario! There we go, finally. Alright, so we're going to play the second one, but we're going to make it another episode because I think we've covered a lot of stuff in that. Um, I'm going to just, like, I'm going to just obviously stop recording because I'm recording live now. So what I'll do is I'm going to go back and analyze a couple of things in that game of the runs and stuff and just slow it down a little bit in that um, because it's easier and I'll just kind of talk about it. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a bit of a bit of a slower paced episode. Obviously, we didn't play divisions. Obviously, we just played one game and it was all about setting up my squad. What I will do is I want your guys' input on my squad, right? So numbers. We're talking numbers. We're talking game plan. We're talking captaincy. We're talking all that sort of stuff. Let me know what you guys are thinking um, because I will be able to change this now if I go into the tactics and... Or where is it? Team. And go to edit squad number. So Donna, he is going to be our number one, obviously. Um, we will keep him at number one. But then the rest of the players are kind of up for, they're up for, I don't know what way you'd put it. I mean, we can put, we can put Vieira four, we can put Maldini three. Um, I think the big one is Ronaldinho and Maradona at number 10. And then Romario, obviously, probably make Romario number nine. But yeah, let me know your thoughts, lads. There could be a bit of battling for that 11 shirt. Corona has it at the moment, but Corona could switch to... He could switch to a seven very easily, lads. He could be my number seven, genuinely. So we do have a lot to figure out with the squad. Let me know your input in that. I will let you guys dictate who is who and what number they are. Um, no crazy ones. And Corona has to get top billing. But yeah, that is it for me, lads. We'll end it there. Bit of a shorter episode, short and sweet. As I said, I'll go in and I'll just analyze a bit after I've stopped recording this. I'll do it in post. Um... But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a little bit different, obviously, a bit slower paced. I'll be back with episode 14, which is literally just going to be divisions, divisions, divisions. And we'll probably have about four games in that. Um, and hopefully some good goals and hopefully not too much rage. But yeah, that is it for me. I'll be back with another episode quite soon, lads. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Make sure and check out the last few videos that I've put up, including the eFootball DB go, uh, walkthrough including the how to set your team up right tutorial and a couple of other ones as well, best managers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, any more suggestions in the box or in, get them in the, in the comments box below in the replies. I am working on a video for speed at the moment. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, what is the difference between 85 acceleration and 95 acceleration or so on and so forth. So yeah, any more recommendations for videos, let me know. I will talk to you in a bit, lads. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. All right, let's see. So just a quick analysis uh, that I said I'd show you about no, the same wide thing here. You can see here that I get a counter-attack out wide. Corona, out to Ronaldinho, Munayin. And that's why I think out wide suits me best, wide, lads. Misses the ball, but still gets it through to Romario. So if you're playing a 4-5-1, Romario is going to be your link-up man that's going to bring in everything. Now, you can see Neymar's position in here on the left side of the pitch. And obviously, you can see that this is what the tactic is doing that I talked about. So when attacking out wide, players like Neymar and Munayin or whoever my left and right midfielders are, 
in this formation are going to hug the touchline and give you that width, give you those options, so that you're not too central or attacking too down the middle. And when you see this play out again, you'll see Neymar, who is on the who's on the, the touchline here, this is a big problem for the opponent because it's a 3v4, really, when you think about it, because I've got all the momentum going forward. Because I like so the options here as wide. the challenge, as the ball breaks forward, Neymar just a little cut inside, and then I get a free chance. I probably Neymar. could have slipped oh. it inside there and had a goal. This is in real Not time, so again, again Romario spreading it out, out to Overlap. Ronaldinho, back into inside. Maradona, and then Nakata gets it in here. So from wide into a central position oh, for a chance in goal. We won't talk oh about Oh my God, this, Romario! Yeah, lads, that is it for the, is that? For, the, for the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know any feedback in the comments below. We will have to see how we go with Division 1 because we're probably running out of time with the seasons. But we will, uh, we will be back quite soon with another episode. Hope you enjoyed the series. I'll talk to you later. Peace.